What's going on, guys? Brian's here. Today is Thursday, August 15th, 2024. Now, what can we take away from today's zero DTE SPX levels? If you've been following the series over the past few weeks, you know I've been doing these recaps as much as I can, covering the price action from the S&P 500 with a focus on gamma exposure. So we're going to take a look at the gamma exposure at the start of the day, try to see what can we take away and apply that information in the future to help us pick a direction on the market. We can see that this was a pretty bullish day again in the markets, but the clues were right there in the gamma exposure. If we take a look at this is what our GEX profile looked like 15 minutes into the market open. This was just about the spot price at the time. This was the highest positive gamma. There was no real reason to think that the market should drop unless we broke down below this level, but we'll get into this in a second. As we take a look at this chart here, we can see I went ahead and marked some of these levels on the charts to make it a little bit easier for those of you that don't quite know how to read this yet. In the Quant Trading App Discord earlier in the day, I love that you guys are able to pick this up for yourself here. So at 10 a.m., 30 minutes into the market open, can't say the gamma exposure could look any more bullish. This is our zero DTE print right here. So this is 10 a.m. Nothing about this looks like we're going to pull back. I want to take the time to highlight this traders here, this position that he decided to trade. It was a zero DTE broken wing butterfly. He's been a trader that's been watching a ton of the videos and he's been a Quant Trading App Gold member for well over a year now. The video that was just released earlier this week, I shared a broken wing butterfly in which I decided to hold until expiration, targeting a strike in which I thought the market was going to pin. This is within 45 minutes after the market opens, he decides to run a broken wing butterfly targeting 540. Why did he target 540? It's pretty apparent just by looking at the gamma exposure profile right here. This is our absolute gamma strike. This is our highest positive gamma strike. So earlier in the morning, this is 35 minutes into the market, I'm basing this off of the gamma exposure that was 15 minutes into the market open. I took this information and I plotted it on the chart. So these are these levels that you guys are seeing here, creating the framework for the day from a gamma exposure perspective. This is the direct translation from this information. So let's make this a little larger and I want to break it down step by step for some of you that are new to gamma exposure. If this is where the market is currently trading, th the first thing I want to do is try to find what is the closest support and resistance. This would be the closest support. This would be the closest resistance. In this case here, 500. Only if the market breaks below 500 will I start thinking that there is room for the market to go much lower. This is our support. While we are above this support level, it's pointless to think that the market is going to sell off. We are in a net positive gamma environment. That is why we see no red on this chart. When we are in a net negative gamma environment, these levels down here will be red. This is an example of when the net gamma exposure is negative. This is where these red bars show up. When there is no red bars on the charts, we are in an overall net positive gamma environment. That means if price is above a key support strike, there isn't much reason to think we are going to sell off. So we start off by identifying what is our closest support. If this is where the SPX is, we'll say 510, the closest support is 500. Where is our closest resistance? We look for the next biggest bar towards the upside. So in this case here, that would be 525. However, we take note of what is the largest positive gamma strike. And then this case here, it is 540. It also happens to be the absolute gamma strike. So this becomes our target if we are a bull for the day. We can go higher, which is something you want to see. The blue in the background is volume for these contracts traded. So all this blue that's in the background here, there's a lot of blue here and all the way here, there's a spike in the blue and then there's this bump in the blue here. It seems to be that there are a lot of participants in calls at this point of the day relative to how low the volume is on the put side. This is not the entire options chain. It is just the strikes that have enough gamma exposure to show up on quant trading apps GEX radar for today. So it's only covering the strikes from 415 to 580. In other words, anything past 580 doesn't have enough gamma exposure to show up on the meter and anything below 415 does not have enough gamma exposure to show up on the reader. So what we're looking at on this graph here is the volume for the strikes that actually matter from a gamma exposure standpoint. Looking at this graph, that's where these levels are coming from. So 510, there is a lot of call volume on strikes above. So high call volume on strikes above 510. I made that that blue strike right here. Here's 510. Here's where that bump of all that volume starts coming in. 
every strike above here has much higher volume relative to anything below that strike. Here is P1. This is our highest positive gamma strike. So 540, it is the zero DTE highest positive gamma strike. It also happens to be the absolute gamma strike. Where is our support? 500. Zero DTE positive GEX supports. Then we have zero DTE positive GEX is low below here. So 480, if we take a look at the chart, this is 480. Below this strike, there isn't really that much positive GEX relative to how much positive GEX is above that strike. Then we just want to take note of where's our highest negative gamma strike. That is N1. It's at 425. 425 is all the way down here. This is the strike with the largest amount of negative gamma exposure. This also happens to be the zero DTE max pain. And that is the information that is on this chart here. Just by taking a look at this chart, we have enough context and we have enough information to be able to take actionable trades. First step is we don't want to look for a short trade unless the SPX was to get below here because this is our positive gamma exposure support we know there's a lot of call volume that's happening above this strike in other words this is where the party is above this strike here there isn't much reason to think we're going to go past 540 or 550 as there is low gamma exposure above 550 it's also taken into context how far the market has come for the week it has been on a tear for the past few days so naturally things will look to slow down and stall out around certain strike prices it generally happens around the highest positive gamma strike especially when there's confluence of it being the absolute gamma strike so as an exercise let's take a look at the gamma exposure here so this is 15 minutes after the market opened and i'm just going to click through this and let's see how price interacts this is 15 minutes later so now 10 a.m eastern time 30 minutes after the market opens let's see what's happening with price every 15 minutes look at how the positive gamma has grown up here this strike is standing out so much it's dominant it's now 11:30 a.m eastern time all the volume is starting to become concentrated around here but we had enough clues of that well over an hour before price got here, we had enough clues to understand that this is likely what was going to happen with price action. Gamma exposure is just one way to interpret the market, and it should not be the sole way in which you interpret the market. Price action is very important, but this is providing a three-dimensional view of the market. If this is two-dimensional, when you look at a chart, this is providing a three-dimensional room. I've had a trader that I've had a one-on-one -on -one with even call it a four-dimensional view of the market as we're seeing the volume and the gamma exposure. But as we continue along here, let's just keep clicking. Let's keep Keep clicking right along and we can see price is just hovering and bouncing around that strike this is expected for the type of gamma profile that we had here today we can see price is trying to go a little higher this is now power hour just going to continue to click through this until we loop back to the beginning of the day here so this is our start 15 minutes after the market opens it's good to, t to wait 15 to 30 minutes after the market opens just to let the data settle in but I figured that'd be neat for you guys to see the progression of price in relation to the gamma exposure on a zero DTE profile. I don't know if Boone held this trade until the end of the day, but nonetheless, this was an excellent trade. So great job, Boone. Pretty sure you're watching this video. As we continue to scroll right along here, I just want to point out something that I think is great because now it shows that you guys are actually paying attention and asking the right questions. This trader is an SPX trader. The question that he asked was, if the SPX is already clear the expected move should we assume a slower grind up or maybe chop to the next power strike right now the expected move for today was 24 and the delta change from the open is already 34 so what is he asking based on that information let me just point out my response so we'll get to this here the SPX is above the power strike now which is this strike right here 530 I drew a range around this because at this point there isn't much of a reason let me make this larger for you guys there isn't much of a reason to think that price will go back below 530 if it goes below 530 the expected move for the day was 525 i would expect this to be some sort of support but for the most part what i've been showcasing for you guys is this power strike is, is pretty significant especially when it latches onto the absolute gamma strike so let's make this full screen and let's play back the tape here this is five minutes into the market opens i'm going to press play and let's just take a look at price action as we see the power strike earlier on it has latched up to 540 so the power strike is up here the absolute gamma strike it's bouncing around as the new information is coming in now it's 10.45 a.m. and we get our first significant touch of a key strike here. We are now coming up to the expected move from the open. If we continue to play this out, let's see what happens with price. We are now breaking past the expected move for the open and it looks like we are about to close over it. 
it's almost around this time that that trader asked the question. But taking a look at this, the market has now moved past the expected move for the open and we are coming up to the one sigma close. So on a normal day within a one standard deviation move, this is where the market would close based on quant trading apps data. However, we see that the power strike has latched onto the absolute gamma strike. It's still showing there's a little bit more room to go. But as we continue to play this along, let's see what happens with price. We reject the first initial touch here. Price goes back and now it closes above here on a 15 minute time frame. And let's continue to let this play out. And it's around now. So noon midday is when that question gets axed. This is our power strike. This strike acts as a key strike throughout the day, not only as a potential magnet, but it acts as support and resistance. It is a strong magnet when it latches onto the absolute gamma strike. On its own, it's just like any other strikes, so it shouldn't be taken into any significant consideration when it's on its own. But when we see it latching on next to a key area like this, so this is our expected close for the day from a one sigma standpoint, 531. The power strike is 530. You might as well just group these together and call this 530 as these are close enough. Right below it, this was the expected move from the open of 525. So we can infer at this point that this area here should be our support. If the market was to keep going higher, the expectation would be this is the next logical step. But earlier in the day, around 10 a.m. Eastern time, we already knew that this was a potential target for the day. We had enough context with the power strike also confirming this as well as the absolute gamma strike. It was the highest positive gamma. That is what this chart is telling us. Behind this here, it's also showing that this is the highest strike with the most amount of call volume. We can confirm that by looking at the gamma exposure at that point in the day. So there's a blue behind this strike that's higher. We can, we can see it faintly in the background, but this is letting us know this is the strike price that also has the highest amount of call volume. These are snapshots and images, by the way, so they can't so the information can't be changed, but this information is cached within the quant trading app system. So those of you that are gold members know that you can change the colors. In other words, if you're seeing this for the first time, if I were to come to this page here and we let that information load, this graph is interactive. So I could turn on the absolute gamma, I could turn on the call volume, turn on the put volume. But for purposes of these recap videos, I'm just reviewing these still as it makes it quicker to analyze. And that's the information that we're getting throughout the day in the gamma exposure discord feed. The reason I like to look back at this tape at the end of the day here is because it's, it's now just about the middle of the day and sometimes there's another opportunity for the afternoon. At this point in time, what could you do? What would be a good trade? There's the opportunity for an iron condor. You can just take a look at this range and say, hey, as long as the market stays within this range for another hour or two, there's opportunity here for time decay. If you like to sell credit spreads, you can ask yourself, which strikes will you want to sell? Selling strikes below 525, maybe you don't want to give it any upside risk because you're telling yourself there's still enough room for the markets to go up to 540. So you'd rather just scalp the trade up, close out your put credit spread. If you're looking to buy calls based on this information, buying the calls at the support level with a stop loss below it, or if we came back down to 525, there's the opportunity to look to buy calls with the potential to scout back up to 540 or whatever would be the high of day in that point. I'm just gonna continue to play the tape out because obviously I could spend so much time just talking about this here, but I think it's neat just to be able to see the power strike ended up bouncing right back up. Market went up to 540, and then we can see we ended up just chopping around this strike for the rest of the day there were moves and micro scalps in between but i don't think it's worth discussing every single five to ten point scalp as you guys know that's not really my style of trading just continue to let it play out and then by its close let me oops i ended up going all the way back to the beginning so by the end of the day we ended up closing right around 5 40. so it was another day back to back the video i just released yesterday i showcased the zero dte broken wing butterfly that i chose to share today i'm showing an example of what another trader decided to share so if you're unfamiliar with this style of trading, there's, there's so many different ways to approach zero DTE trading. I like to take the approach based on data. I like to have levels that are not based on things that I see on the charts. I like to be able to confirm them with gamma exposure as it is providing a three dimensional view of the market, keeping things pretty simple. I'm not looking to short below here. I'm looking to be long above this area here. This is where most of the participants are for the day. I don't have much expectations for the markets to go past these strikes here as there's just not enough interest on the gamma exposures perspective. One trader might take this information and say, hey, I'm going to buy calls at this level, maybe buy the 540 call. 
use whatever type of other momentum based system in which you might have in place for yourself. If you're using something like a three minute time frame and you decide to be long on the breakouts, you're holding your calls until price breaks down below the nine EMA, whatever your exit strategy is, it helps to have a firm foundation at least at the start of the day and then you're just waiting for your setups to unfold for your entries and your exits if you're enjoying these videos let me know again in the comments down below i can share something with you guys here today i took a loss on a 1 dte uh iron condor i was expecting chop over the next couple days so i didn't run this zero dte i decided to make it a 1 dte earlier in the day thinking the market even if we went higher we would have stalled out and probably rejected and kind of had some sort of a flat day I gave it one DTE because I figured for today, if there was some sort of momentum, I didn't really want to get trapped in a zero DTE and have to micromanage the position. So towards the end of the day here, I just decided to eat the loss on this. And this is what it looked like. So my one DTE trade ended up being a loss. Zero DT, there wasn't really much of a problem as it was pretty simple. Again, sell some puts, just be long, take profit at the target, run a zero DT butterfly for the afternoon session around here. It's almost rinse and repeat from a similar strategy from yesterday. In yesterday's video, sell some puts down here. Expect the afternoon consolidation around the massive gamma strike of 450 yesterday. Today, it was 550. Thanks for watching, guys. Like the video. Share it if you learned something. Leave a comment down below, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.